All right, so I'm going to begin by dropping in a instance of um, Vlacho, which is a robot designed by uh, Ariel C Sierra from Colombia. He uh, has this character for sale at ToonTitan.com if you're interested. Um, basically, there was a lot of people, uh, not a lot, there was a couple people, there was a, uh, exactly two people <laughs> on the Crazy Talk Animator for, um, uh, group today who uh, posted some uh, ninja run cycles. Uh, I'm not sure uh, what prompted it, but um, there was some issues that I kind of... Uh, took up with the way they were animated. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do my own take on that same running cycle because I did make uh, a couple of comments that may have been uh, perceived as, uh, you know, a little bit of harsh criticism. Uh, I believe in uh, pretty much most instances I referred to the characters as looking like they had their ass stuck on a chopstick and were just flailing their arms around uh, like crazy, you know? And that's not really what the animation is supposed to be. You know, when you animate something, especially when you're trying to do something more of a, uh, you know, more of a classical type of animation. And, and I mean, this particular animation cycle is not exactly classical, but it is hand-drawn usually. Uh, it's inspired by the Naruto Ninja Run Cycles. And, um, and even though it comes from a form of limited animation, which is what most anime is, uh, you always try to retain some kind of sense of weight and uh, uh, balance and uh, physics. So uh, in this example, what I'm trying to do is kind of demonstrate that so that primarily, you know, uh, you don't think that I'm just being harsh with my criticism because I'm not, uh, uh, you know, uh, I want to be able to point out um, what I'm talking about. And I understand that a lot of people just simply, uh, a lot of people who use Crazy Talk Animator are not professionals, are not people with experience in animation. And uh, in many cases, uh, a complex looking animation might look good enough, but there's a lot more involved into making something look a little bit more be believable and presentable. What I'm doing here right now is, uh, I'm gonna drop this little prop and uh, has nothing to do with the animation itself right now. I'm just going to use it as a way uh, to reference my character's uh, hip uh, position. Uh, I want to make sure that my character's hip is not just floating in place, okay? I don't want my character to just look like he's moving his ar uh, arms and legs like, you know, like a crazy person and just standing in, in, um, standing in place. Uh, so I'm going to use that as a marker so that uh, I know that if my character's butt stays in that region, then I'm not doing a proper job. Okay, My character needs to be able to shift and move based on his body weight and uh, you know the sense of gravity and stuff. So right, uh, right now, he is uh, kind of floating in the air. You know, his uh, left leg just kind of crossed over its... Um, um, he's getting ready to land with this uh, left leg onto the floor. So once he does that, I mean, his butt's going to come down with it. You know, you can't just keep the butt up there. And that's the main thing that hurts uh, those other guys who attempted this uh, animation cycle. And even if you go look at the original reference, uh, like these Naruto animations, you can see that the uh, the weight is there. You know, you're not just floating in the air while their uh, legs are, you know, just kind of flailing around. So, so here's my character. He's uh, he's getting ready to land. He's impacting down. Uh, I believe this is frame five. I'm probably gonna do this as a, maybe like an eight frame or eight keyframe sequence, and I'm gonna let the software just kind of do the in betweens for me. Uh, I am using a G2 character. Uh, G2 characters have a 3D skeleton system, and 
but I'm animating him basically in uh, within a 2D plane. So, so uh, I'm just looking for key points within that side view uh, for the animation itself. And uh, my keyframes, uh, I'm focusing my keyframes on having a nice uh, silhouette. So even if it's just a single frame that you're looking at, that keyframe should look like um, like he's doing something, okay? Like like there's action there. So it every keyframe should be a very interesting pose. You know, it should be able to stand out in silhouette. So here here I go with the. Uh, with the hip region, uh, I'm making sure that it's no longer where my little marker is. And this is probably going to be the, the lowest point of the character. Uh, so I'm probably going to mark this down too to make sure that in subsequent keyframes, I'm not, I'm not going below that. I can, but you know, I don't want to make things too complicated for myself. So. Let's see here. I'm adjust that right leg, make sure it's kind of crossing over, but I don't want to hide that leg in the back, okay? I don't just want to just keep it in there. I want to be able to have it in silhouette so that so that the pose itself is is interesting, you know? So I'm kind of just finding good spot and the thing with crazy talk animator also is that it doesn't have an onion skinning tool so it's very hard to do uh, uh, classical style uh, animation so you pretty much have to uh, do that type of animation straight on frame to frame or pose to pose or whatever you want to call it um, where you don't necessarily have the full freedom of just being able to, you know, put out two basic keyframes and then come back and create your breakdown. It, it's a little bit more difficult to work that way. So sometimes you just kind of have to get a, a sense of um, of how things move and just kind of draw head on. Uh, it's a 3D skeletal system, so you can always come back and tweak uh, those main things. So what I do recommend though is uh, choose your keyframes wisely. Right now I'm working on uh, frame number 10 so I'm just kind of dividing everything every five frames. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move over to uh, keyframe uh, or frame number 15 and I'm gonna lay down my next keyframe there. So every keyframe that I'm laying down I'm pretty much just uh, laying it down every five frames. I'm not too worried about about the uh, uh, what do you call it uh, you know slowing in slowing out stuff uh, I'm basically just focusing on uh, getting my my main keyframes correctly you know later on if I need to I can come back and tweak certain keyframes move them in space them out uh, more better um, in many cases, I mean, something like this, you probably don't even have to. A, a straight-on animation probably work just fine. And, of course, it's not completely technical, so the, the poses are not going to be replicated, replicated and mirrored exactly. So it, there's going to be a little bit of variety to it. Um, let's see here. Um, probably make it into like a 15 keyframe. Um, half of that would be what uh, seven or eight so it'll be about seven or eight actual keyframes in total um, we'll see so right now I'm at frame 15 and I'm creating my keyframe there and I'm basically you know I'm not even worried about what goes in between I know the software is going to do a pretty decent job at just kind of in betweening my puppet for me so that's not even something I'm worried about but I do have uh, two markers in place. I got one for the top of the hip and one for the bottom of the hip. Those two markers, I'm pretty much just going to erase once I'm done, but I'm just using them to keep track of the movement of my character. And one of the things that you gotta keep in mind when doing any kind of motion or bipedal motion type of stuff is that, you know, when you walk forward or you run forward, you're literally pushing with one foot 
and I'm going to try to exaggerate all my movements here, even though I probably should make them a little bit more subtle. But when you push, you know, that leg, I mean, that, that pushes your entire body up. And, um, and it takes the butt with it. It takes the, the, the torso with it. It takes the head with it. Now, if you want to be like really, really intricate, you can uh, add follow through with the arms and you can add some body twisting and and the head and everything. But this is uh, this particular cycle is, uh, you know, it's a little bit more limited. So I'm not going to focus too much on that. I'm, I'm probably going to add a little bit of it to it just just so it doesn't look too synthetic. But. Um, but, yeah, you know, uh, when you push with one leg you're literally pushing the entire body up so there's some kind of motion that happens there and as you're in the air you can't just stay there you know there's gravity so how are you gonna how are you gonna approach that okay so one you're falling and two you're moving forward at the same time and then again once you land the body weight is gonna bring you down uh, some more so you gotta be able to project all that in every keyframe that you that you uh, pose so the cool thing about animating with uh, Crazy Talk Animator, uh, especially with G2 characters, is that you're basically animating uh, with puppets. You're puppeteering, you know, even though in this case we're keyframing, uh, we're keyframing uh, through the use of a digital 2D puppet with a 3D skeleton system, which is kind of cool. So you probably notice how I'm clicking on the uh, little padlocks on the legs and stuff. Sometimes uh, I want the feet to stay in place, so I lock those uh, feet so that, you know, it kind of allows those feet to stay in place when I bring down the body weight. Uh, and sometimes I want to be able to move those legs so that, you know, I can raise the legs and, you know, kick forward kick backwards and stuff like that so that's when I uh, shift the uh, the status of that padlock and you have those for the arm the hands and the feet uh, I'm not gonna be using any of the hand stuff uh, right now let's see what else is going on here So I'm pretty much animating this character on the uh, 270 degree profile. Uh, he is fully rigged in um, uh, you know all of the angles that he needs to be front, side, 45, etc. Uh, so once this animation cycle is complete, technically you could just change the angle of the character and he'll still be animated because it's a 3d skeleton system uh, but you can adjust the angle to whatever you want afterwards uh, this is kind of how I animate a lot of stuff uh, sometimes I'll uh, animate the a character from side from from a complete uh, 2d plane uh, side view and even though I'm not that's not the, the final animation it just makes things easier to do uh, You've probably seen, uh, there's two of my clips on uh, the Reillusion demo that they have going on right now on, the, on their Facebook page and on their website. You've probably seen that clip with the little kids riding the bicycles and uh, trying to get away from this uh, truck. Well, that's one of my clips. And uh, that bicycle sequence, I animated that motion from a side view uh, just so I can get the, the pedaling and the gripping uh, portions just right. Uh, once I had the the motions done, I basically used the uh, rotation option to just flip it so that they're facing forward and the animation was retained. So it looked really nice. I, I was really happy with the way that particular sequence came out. So here we are working on frame um, I believe it's 25 already.
moving over to frame 30. Here we're gonna just kind of wiggle them around just to establish the keyframe, but I'm actually pasting um, frame one here so I can use that as a, as a way to finalize my cycle so it'll be basically ends the same way that we started. Um, I'm gonna reduce, because I think I, that this is it, gonna be it. I'm just gonna leave it as a 30 frame cycle. Let's test it. And there we go. You know, at this point we're pretty much done and it's less than 15 minutes into it. So that was not that bad. I mean, I can take my, um, my stretch tool and uh, just squeeze it in if I wanna make this uh, sequence faster. Or, uh, or stretch it if I want to make it slower. But if all you're doing is doing a basic, you know, Naruto Ninja run cycle, I mean, this you're pretty much done. Uh, I'm, I am gonna add a little bit more follow through on the head and the, the neck region and uh, these arms, you know, he's, he's going down so the arms are gonna be up. You know, it's like, whew, you know, there's a little bit of weight that the hands will follow the body. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that to it. Just one time. I don't want to make it like too technical. You know, I, uh, if I try to make everything extremely symmetrical, then they, it starts looking fake. You know, it starts looking forced and synthetic. That should be about right. Let's test it. Mm. Let's see. Yeah. It's not bad. There we have it. So, the whole thing pretty much took less than 15 minutes to do uh, with the addition of follow through and stuff. Uh, maybe uh, 16, 17 minutes. Did I say seconds? <laughs> no, I wish. Um, about 15 minutes, I would say, to do a, a motion cycle like this. I'm going to get rid of these two little uh, props here. I was just using them as a reference for, for uh, the hip region and the body. Uh, so as you can see, the, the body is being pushed uh, with uh, the character, uh, with his movements. You know, the, the legs are driving the entire body. He's not just floating there with his ass in the air. So a lot more natural. I'm gonna save it so that, you know, in case something crashes. But I think we're gonna go ahead and go into a little bit of a bonus round. This is kind of stuff that you don't have to do, but I kind of feel like doing just for the hell of it. Uh, a couple of enhancements. Let's see. I'm gonna flatten this thing out. That way I can add additional overlapped 3D motions and stuff. Let's play around with this. See. See if we can make it a little bit more interesting. I don't know. Does it matter? Probably not. It's not bad. Again, at this point, I'm pretty much done. Uh, I'm just kind of tweaking it. Uh, sometimes you can get a little bit obsessed uh, with stuff and in a real world project, you probably don't have to put this much effort into it. Uh, uh, cycles like this only appear for a few seconds on screen anyways. Uh, and as long as you have some kind of sense of weight, it'll be fine. play around with this I hardly ever touch this uh, stuff so I'm not even sure if it if it works or not um, it doesn't seem like it does uh, I think it, it, it only works from like keyframe to keyframe when when you're doing certain things but uh, let's test it out I don't know I don't know if it'll make a difference Let's try that. 
I don't really see much of a difference, to be honest. Uh, I Most of the times I just ignore those type of uh, synthetic curves and stuff. I just kind of animate straight on. I have been doing this for almost 20 years now, so I do have a kind of a, a, a sense of, uh, of weight and timing already so that even when I'm doing stuff evenly spaced out, you know, every five keyframes, I'm still kind of laying down my anatomy in a way that, you know, you, your software, once the software manipulates the, uh, the movement, uh, it'll produce the result that I kind of want. That just, uh, that's one of those things that just come with experience. So I'm just kind of tweaking some of the facial features right now. That's about right. It's easy to get obsessed with uh, such a small uh, cycle, a small motion and stuff, but you know, if you're done, you know, it doesn't hurt. If you have time and you're done, it doesn't hurt to play around and, you know, further tweak and sometimes you might find a little accidental nudge that just makes everything look a lot better. Sometimes you'll find that you just wasted your time. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to take that first keyframe and try to paste it at the end again to just kind of round out the, the cycle if I can. Let's see, I don't even know if it's worth it. It's not letting me. Software's a little finicky sometimes, you know. Yeah, it doesn't look that bad. <clears throat> All right, let's save it real quick. I'm going to flatten this thing out, I think, uh, just to kind of preserve it. And uh, check this out. If I stretch it in or squeeze it, it'll just make that animation faster. So let's see. That's 25 frames. So, you can adjust the speed at will once you have everything laid out. So, here's a lot faster. And of course, you can loop it. And So it just depends, you know. Once you have the animation cycle, you can stretch it out, squeeze it in, loop it, do all sorts of uh, fancy things to it, depending on what you're trying to uh, achieve. It's uh, 20 frames long. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> let's see what can we try next let's uh let's save this motion so you can see how uh once you've created a 3d motion all you have to do is press this button here in the animation section give it a name and it becomes a reusable animation cycle so let's uh bring out another character just so you can see how these uh, animations once you've created them you can pretty much reuse them on pretty much any other character this is uh, Sammy uh, another character uh, also designed by uh, by Ariel 
Uh, these characters, by the way, there are they are available at ToonTitan.com. So if you like these characters and you want to use them in your own productions, they are royalty free. I think they're only like ten bucks each. So you feel free to go to ToonTitan.com, purchase them. Um, Ariel gets uh, the majority of the the um, the the purchasing funds from the the sales of these characters since they're they're his characters. Um, so here you go. You can see that uh, I've animated Sammy and I've actually sped up his animation cycle. So they're not necessarily running at the same pace or you know at the same time all synchronized but yeah you know I don't um, I don't do uh, patreon and uh, don't necessarily ask for donations or anything for you know Keeping up my channel alive, bringing out new content, blah, 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 all that stuff, you know. Um, if you go to Toon Titan, uh, you can buy a lot of my characters and uh, some of uh, Ariel's characters and things and props and stuff of that nature. So if uh, this is the sort of stuff that interests you, if you have Crazy Talk Animator, you can purchase these things and uh, it'll help us out and, um, um, you know, help yourself out too at the same time. So, okay, I'm done with that demo. Let's go into the real bonus round. Uh, this is just like a little uh, prop that I've made. It's kind of a, it's just kind of like a smeared shape, really. Uh, it's just kind of a, a trick that I use uh, because Crazy Talk Animator doesn't have its own drawing tools, so you can't just uh, go in there and draw smears or or modify uh, things uh, at will. So I created uh, a series of little um uh smear shapes that i can use just to kind of uh add uh, glitches and um visual artifacts uh to uh animated sequences and obviously this is not stuff that you need to do it's just kind of hey check this out this is something that you can do just just kind of make it feel a little bit more smoother okay animation is really a form of um, uh, illusions you know you're creating a, a visual illusion and you're tricking your audience's mind you're tricking your you're, you're fooling your audience into uh, believing that they're seeing something that's not really there so what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of use this shape as a way to like um, kind of smoothen out the transition between some of like the like the really jagged movements like between that last keyframe and this one uh the movement of this left leg is quite drastic so i'm just going to replace um i'm going to overlay this um this prop so that it shows up just for one frame you know just enough so that it blends those two keyframes together so that 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 sharp that let's you see how it is right there that really sharp uh jump from one frame to the next uh just kind of it kind of marries it you know it just kind of creates a visual artifact there see so and it's gonna it happens so fast that you're not really paying attention to it your brain's gonna fill in the blanks and and just kind of it's gonna make you believe that you're seeing something that's not really there it just kind of blends that makes everything look smoother even though it's not <laughs> so here's another really jagged frame where the where the leg just kind of pops really hard I'm gonna try to place this there and I'm just gonna make it like appear for like one frame or something just enough to like blend those two frames together see pop right there pop okay and then hide it everywhere before hide it everywhere after and boom it just creates a visual distortion there and your brain is not going to perceive it it's just going to you know it's just going to interpret it differently so 
again, you know, this is just flair, visual flair. <laughs> um, we were pretty much done within the first 15 minutes of this video. At this point, we're just kind of showing off. Um, but it's fun, it's fun. Um, so if, uh, if you decide to try this, you know, uh, post the link in the comments. Uh, I'd like to see what you come up with. And uh, especially if you start working with like smears and stuff. And I mean, I would love to see what people are doing with smears and, and blurs uh, in Crazy Talk because it's not a very common thing to do. But as you can see, it's very possible and it definitely helps uh, make animations look a lot smoother than they really are. There you go. See, not too bad. You can't, you can, I mean, Unless you pause it frame by frame, you can't really tell that those things look like that. You know, your brain just kind of sees uh, the movement kind of just flowing a little bit smoother, you know? It's a trick. I wonder if uh, making those a little bit more transparent. Nah, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Um, but I will maybe adjust the colors a little bit more in a minute. I'm gonna grab this and duplicate it and uh, use the same uh, prop on the other leg just to kind of smoothen out a couple of those other frames there on the, for the other leg. I'm not even gonna bother also with uh, trying to like layer it or anything like that. Now these particular smears, unfortunately, uh, you can't save them as part of the reusable motion. So it's just kind of visual flair that you can do. And in many cases, it's actually probably better to just kind of do this type of stuff um, outside of Crazy Talk, like maybe export the images uh, as PNG sequences and uh, import them into Flash and just kind of draw uh, your smears uh, in Flash, replacing the, the entire uh, frame that, that needs to be done. They actually end up looking a lot better that way. Uh, you can use Photoshop too. Photoshop accepts image sequences. And um, I might actually do a video on that next week. Um, because I'd like to be able to demonstrate to people how you can do more traditional style animation um, with this. I mean, these G2 characters, they're, they tend to have a little bit of a, a reputation for, you know, uh, for not being quite perfect in the way they move. And that's mainly because of the, the sprite switching that takes place. And a lot of the hinges, sometimes they come off and stuff. But in all honesty, that's stuff that could be e that, that, that is easily fixed in post. So most cases, I don't even bother trying to fix uh, visual imperfections uh, within Crazy Talk. I just try to focus on getting the animation and the movement right. Because I know that once I'm done, uh, no matter how the character gets broken up or gets tweaked and stuff, uh, uh, I can always take those image sequences into something like Photoshop and use Photoshop to clean out those, those uh, sharp edges and those sprite switches and add uh, really nice uh, smears that are a little bit more organic. Uh, but for the purpose of this demonstration, I guess this is more than enough, you know, more, more, more than good enough. Just adjusting the colors a little bit more so they'll match that leg. The, the better the color looks, uh, the matches the original color, the, the better the illusion. Because, uh, uh, because if you don't try to match those colors, uh, then, 
you know, they do end up putting too much focus on them and it becomes more obvious that there's something there that doesn't quite belong. Crazy Talk does, uh, animator doesn't necessarily have the best color system. You just kind of have to, you just got to have to play with it. Uh, and hopefully you land on the colors that you want uh, by moving levers around. I don't think there's any logic behind it. If there is, I would not know how to explain it. It's uh, some kind of weird additive color system. Yeah, it's not too bad. Maybe add some uh, green smears too to match the feet with uh, some detached smears. So it's not necessarily the full foot, but maybe like a little blur trail slash smear let's see how that kind of plays out I'm gonna start with this foot here let's see that's fine okay right there there was a sharp like you know there was a like, this are look a really heavy sharp so I'm gonna use this to just kind of add a um, an additional blur like a little blur trail for the foot and I, I'm not even gonna connect it too much to the foot. I'm just gonna leave it there like as a, like an artifact. Try to, it's not easy to find the colors that you want using this system, but oh well, do your best. <laughs> Let's see. I know I'm in here somewhere for, get that green. Can't go by the actual colors on that lever because I just don't know how they, they they get get those colors. Um, you just gotta see. I'm like on the yellow side, and I don't know. Just gotta fill with it until you get. That's almost about right. Oops, maybe a little bit dark outline. That's about right. I'm close enough. Maybe, yeah, let's just deform it. Yeah, I'm not even gonna try to attach it to the foot. I'm just gonna leave it there. <laughs> it looks so weird when you just when you're just looking at the frame by itself. It's like, what the hell is that? You know. But there's a method to the madness. Let's hide that real quick. Short for one frame. Right there. Right there. And then it'll hide again. <laughs> like, why would you do that? It just looks weird. <laughs> eh. That's good enough, come on. I think, yeah. Nope, yeah. Okay, so if we cover a little bit more, see, there you go. Now we're just gonna show it for one frame or so and uh, then we're gonna hide it. Let's see. All we needed is for that little glitch to show up for like one frame. Boom, see? So once you see it in motion, it kind of like makes sense uh, obviously if you freeze frame it and just look at that one frame out of context it just looks kind of stupid you know it kind of looks dumb I was like why would you do that but once you see it in full motion it uh, it does add to the visual uh, quality I'm gonna do something similar over here for this. I don't know if I should attach it or not. That doesn't look too bad. OK. 
okay maybe hide it on the next frame yeah that's not bad let's uh take a look at that boom 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 see it's not that bad at all your brain just kind of fills in those gaps and uh, makes it work, you know? Um, persistence of vision, it's called, um, where your brain pretty much interpolates what it sees, uh, you know, and what it expects to see. And you show it one frame, then you show it the next, and uh, it'll just fill in the blanks for you, you know, You're, in your mind, you'll see something that regardless of whether it's there or not, your brain is gonna fill it. It's a good way to trick the human brain the, into seeing things that are not really there. That's what, I, that's what animation is, you know, it's um, good animation makes use of visual illusions to trick the uh, the human brain into seeing things that are not really there but you're you're manipulating your audience you know you're you're manipulating them into uh, making them see what you want them to see Now, if Crazy Talk Animator had an onion skin system, uh, it would be great because it would allow you to make better in-betweens. But unfortunately, it doesn't, so you just kind of have to learn to animate, you know, straight on. It's actually taken a lot longer to play around with these smears than it did to create the initial um, run cycle. That's all right. At this point, we're just having fun with it. And there you have it. All right, so if you like this sort of videos, let me know. Uh, leave your comments down there if uh, you decide to take on the challenge yourself. Uh, I'd like to see what you come up with.